So I've been having some carburetor issues with my Aaron's tractor, so I decided I would work on the carburetor, but looked on eBay and found these cheap little knockoff gimmicks here. I figured I'd give it a try for 18 bucks. It's less than the price of a rebuild kit. Why not? If it works, great. Basically, comes in this little box here. Neat little carburetor. It's good and clean. Looks like everything functions okay. Also comes with this little bag of goodies. Some gaskets, some clamps, a hose. Not sure what that is. I guess we'll figure that out here very soon. Some other little hardware pieces. So basically the problem with the lawnmower has been the carburetor leaks. So if its fuel is left on to supply the carburetor, it'll leak out and basically fill the system or fill the cylinder full of gas. Um, at one point in time, I've forgotten left the fuel on and it drained back through the cylinder and filled up the entire uh, oil pan. So I had to completely dump all the oil and put new oil into it and uh, refill it with gas and get going with it like that. Well, for obvious reasons, that's getting to be a little bit too much of a pain in the neck. So I decided let's, let's see if we can fix this thing for good. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get the lawnmower out and get set up and see if we can put this thing on. Okay, so I took the liberty of getting out a few tools just to try to help the process along a little bit and get ready here. First thing we do is disassemble, obviously. If I can hold on to the tools, that is. So this is 17.5 Briggs and Stratton engine. Um, Runs pretty good for the most part, other than the carburetor and a whole lot of surging. Um, did a little research because I am by no means a uh, small engine mechanic. Did a little research online and it seems to be that the number one cause of surging is still pointing back to a bad carburetor. So that's why I decided to try and either rebuild this one or in this case here, we're going to replace it with a, an aftermarket carb. What I need is some smaller fingers. So I think also for ease of working on and seeing what's going on, I think we're just going to completely take the entire top off. Also give me a chance too to look over the inside of the motor. You can look at the starter gear, make sure it's still in good functioning order. And maybe just blow the top of the motor off. I like to keep my stuff as clean as I can. I don't I'm not one of those that are freakishly bad about it, but as old as this tractor is, it's still in pretty nice shape, I think. Like I said, I'd kind of like to keep it that way.
if, again, I can hold on to my tools. You can see here, I put this fuel cutoff switch on. I did that myself because of that whole leaking issue that it had developed. It's kind of a temporary fix. Put a Band-Aid on a burn thing. So I'm going to remove this fuel tank to get a little bit more space up in here to see what's going on. That's one good thing about having the fuel cut off on there. So then I can just shut that valve off. Don't have to worry about gas leaking all over the place. And set the tank aside. into this maybe I could have got out something a little bit more automatic for removing these the lazy man way all right so I can pull this guy here off the air intake Go ahead and just leave this all together. This is going to drip a little bit of gas, I'm sure, but it shouldn't be too bad. That. There we go. That yeah, wasn't bad at all. All right, so fuel tank's out of the way. We'll set this off to the side over here. a little bit better. The only thing I've had to do to this tractor to this point, other than just the obvious oil changes, um, blade changes, things like that, is I did have to, at one point, change the uh, starting solenoid to do that, but that's it. So to this day, it's been a, a really good tractor. Something appears to be binding up. I think I see what that is. I'll remove that oil dipstick too. There we go. That's a little more gooder. And there's our culprit. So I think what we'll do here is we're going to start unplugging, obviously, and just get kind of a bird's eye overview of what is going on and do a comparison of the new carburetor with the old.
So there, initially, there are some slight differences. Um, the fuel inlet being number one. This is a straight inlet here, and this comes out and 45s back. I don't think that's going to be an issue. The linkage all appears to be pretty well the same exact thing. So this might actually go pretty easy. Let's see where I did miss a socket. Now, there's a little bit of fuel spill. Again, nothing too bad though. So I'll take this out. This is for the governor here. Nope, I'm sorry, that's for the throttle. This is actually the governor set up. No, choke. Okay, so this here is the throttle linkage with this little spring. It goes to the governor. That's how this thing works. And this black side over here, this is for uh, the choke itself. So I guess we'll just orient and figure out the best way to turn, which looks to be this way. It's a little bit more gas spilling out of the carburetor. Okay, so there's the old carb there. Everything up here looks nice and clean, but that's plastic, so I wouldn't imagine anything differently. Appears to be a missing gasket. Hmm. And some orange silicone on here. This looks like somebody's had this off at one point in time. All right, so let's see if we can get everybody to line back up here. linkage for our choke. that went. I guess it would have to go upside down. There's really only one way that this can slide in here. And I believe that's it. Yep, there we go. So that actuates the choke. So that's good. And we'll find our handy dandy little gasket here. Get a 
everybody to thread back up and lined up. The very coarse thread screws that go into that plastic. So I don't want to over tighten, just get it good enough, snug enough where it won't let any air in. One more check of the choke. The choke seems to be fine. Okay, throttles all the way down. That seems to be working okay. So, I don't have any need for some of the other parts that are in this box. I don't even know. It must be a different model number. There's um, some little guy right here. Looks like some sort of an adjustment or something, or maybe a cable holder. Actually, it might be what it is. It might fit right back here where this is, but. I don't need to change all that out. Everything else works fine. It's just the carburetor in this case. So uh, let's get our bowl plug back in. I'm assuming that can only go one way. No, it can go two ways, but I guess it's not going to matter because there's only two wires, so it probably works on just a positive and negative. So. All right, so let's start getting everything here back together. And we'll fire this puppy up and see what she does. Okay, so first things first, let's get our top end back on, make sure the oil fill lines up. A particular note not to damage the carburetor. How does this come off of here? That would make life a little easier if that wasn't right in the way. But I don't think that's gonna change. So I'm not gonna force that. Better to make work a little easier than taking off more stuff and chewing more things apart. Okay, air cleaner is seated. is right in the way but there we go looks like we're on and set in place so I'm just gonna thread these in lightly for the time being just to hold the top down while I get everything else bolted and lined up our air cleaner. If I get some of this terminology wrong, I apologize. I'm just kind of doing this on the fly, not used to talking my way through this. I'm doing this strictly for camera, of course. Okay, 
so that's good and tight right there. We need to reconnect this tube. Okay, that's back on. The air filter is going to have to be replaced soon, but for the time being, it's, it'll suffice. So air filter's on, seated good. Let's put the rest of the hardware back here. Yeah, wrong size. something on improperly because this guy right here seems to be protruding out quite a bit so it might be a different like bolt and I didn't pay attention to that so there's a goof so what I'll do here real quick is I'll just do a quick comparison not appear to be a different size. No, it is not a different size. That is still sticking out way too far. So there's definitely got to be a mix match in size somewhere or depth on top of this lid or something. So I'm going to make one more attempt at this to figure this out. And then we're going to move on. And 
and there's our difference right there. So one of them definitely is significantly different size. Last bolt. Okay. All right, let's get our handy dandy gas tank back on. <clears throat> like that fuel line is just long enough. Hoorah. So I'm going to stick with the old fuel line as well instead of putting the new one on. And let's get this gas tank bolted down. We'll crank this thing up hopefully and see if it works. In the meantime I guess we can open the fuel up. Make sure there's no leaks. Sorry about that. I know it's kind of loud. Despite my best efforts, I still goof that up. All right, one side's tight. These are locking ratchets. They call them that for a reason. Apparently I forgot how to use them. Okay, there we go. So we'll remove some tools. Alright, my big camera died. I apologize for that. But here we go. Initially, she fires up, still surging a little. I think I can adjust the governor, maybe get some more of that out and adjust the carburetor a little bit better, but so far she runs a whole 
lot better. So, anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Please subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll start doing this more often. Some how-to, some DIYs, and stuff like that. Have a great day.